Okay, in this video we're going to talk about standard deviation. So here I have um, a sample data, data set. Standard deviation is essentially a measure of how far each unit in your data set is from the mean of the data set. So the first step is to take the mean of the values. So you type in average parentheses hold and click to select all of these enter okay so here's our mean the second step is to subtract the mean from that value so to do this I'll select 32 minus the mean now I need to do one more step as I drag my equation through these rows, I don't want B8 to change. I want B2 and B to become B3, B4, etc. But I want B8, that mean, to stay the same. So I'm going to put a dollar sign in there. Okay, now if I click and hold, I can drag that equation right through all of the rows. B3 minus 8. B4 minus 8. Okay? There you go. The third step is to square the result. So here I select my value, raise it to the second power, enter. Click on the cell, drag from the lower right corner. Okay. Now I just have the wrong significant figures default to as many as are possible, but I want to reduce that now the fourth step is to average the squared means. This is actually called the variance. <clears throat> so you can see I typed in average, selected all these values, clicked enter. And the fifth and final step is to take the square root of the variance. And now I have the standard deviation. I want you to understand how the math occurs to get to this mystical number, the standard deviation, but after you run through it once and you understand what goes into it, you can use an equation in Excel to populate that standard deviation. And right here we want to use standard deviation P. There's lots of different options for standard deviation of a population or a sample, but we want to use um, standard deviation P because this is our entire population hypothetically. Okay. Oh. 20.8. There we go. Okay, so that's how you standard deviation is calculated. Now let's take this um, hypothetical set of numbers here. We have data set 1, data set 2, and we want to compare them, and furthermore, we want to compare the spread of information within each data set, i.e. compare the standard deviation of each data set. So to make a chart, I select this area, hold and click, and then I'm going to go up to insert, chart, and you want to insert a simple two-dimensional chart. Okay, if I hold and click I can drag that to wherever I want on the page. <clears throat> okay, so now we have a very simple gra graph. We don't want it to get any more complicated. Please don't waste any time changing the color or the fonts. Just stick with the basics. Um, in science, we want the data to speak for itself. We don't need anything fancy. Okay, so we select the chart area, and then we're going to go up to chart elements to add the standard deviation bars. Now, add chart elements might not be in the top left corner of your version of Excel. You might need to look around for it. Um, it's always in chart tools, and if you can't find it, just use the help menu in Excel. So add chart element, error bars, and I want a, to make my own error bars. I don't want to use anything standard, okay? So I'm going to do both plus and minus. I'm going to put a cap so we can see it. 
and then I want to click custom so I can specify the values based on the math that we did earlier. Okay, now see how those bars shifted? They changed um, to reflect the actual calculated standard deviation. Now since we have those standard deviation bars in there, we definitely want to note that in our title and you need a much more descriptive title than mean. Okay, now you want to also write plus minus, oops, one standard deviation. This lets your viewer know what these bars, these error bars are showing. Okay, now this is still not enough information. We have no label on the x axis, we have no idea what this is. So we want to go back up to um, chart elements. And we want to do axis, titles, primary, vertical, enter. And then when you click in this box, you can type whatever the unit is. I haven't specified a unit in this particular um, data set, but you know, it could be minutes. It could be pounds, could be any numerical unit, okay? Now, same thing with the x-axis. I don't have that label either. So we'll give this a title. Um, this would probably be like, you know, two types of... whatever you would be measuring, or another example would be before and after, whatever the event would be. Okay, it's super important that you have these labels because the viewer of your research has no idea what you are doing if you don't um, distinguish that. Now, finally, you have your graph, it's ready to go. You click, right click on the area and you can copy this graph right into a Word document. <clears throat> so let's see over here. We'll open Word. Control V to drop it in or right click paste. Okay, and there you have your graph right inside your Word document. Please do not submit to me a Excel file in addition to your Word file. I do like to see your numbers so I know if you did it properly. So you could also pick these up as tables in your Word document. If you put in the borders, then we'll actually be able to see the borders in Word. Um, so select this right here, copy, paste, okay, again, you'd need some kind of table name, describe what's in here, and then we can do the same with this little table here. Okay, I hope this was helpful for one last iteration. If you have to put in your lab photos, go up to insert pictures. Pick up a picture from your desktop. Okay. And Oops, I dropped that into the file. Oops, Let's delete that. Go down here. Insert picture. There you go. 
you have your text, your graphs, and your images all in the same document that you submit to the Dropbox. Thank you and let me know if you have any questions.